So in this video, I'm going to show you how to figure out the uh, work done by a heat engine. Okay, uh, so let's get into Boo Pen Land here. All right, ooh, look at that, huh? Okay, so if the piston moves out some distance s like this, and let's assume that that, that uh, somehow the pressure stays constant, so s is either very very small, or we let heat flow into the pressure to keep the pressure constant, right? Um, if that's the case, then we've got two formulas. The first one is that work equals uh, force times distance, right? And then the other one is that pressure is force divided by area, okay? So, um, oh, and then the other formula I guess we've got is that the volume, okay, the, the volume of a cylinder, okay, the volume of a cylinder is uh, the area of the top times the height of the cylinder, so if you're wondering where that formula is, you just, you know, ah, there it is, right? But this area times that height, right? That area times S is going to be the volume there, right? These are, th are we've got three formulas, right? So what I'm going to do here is take this guy and say force is pressure times area and plug that in there. So now this becomes pressure times area times S. And that could pass for a formula, but we're not quite there yet, right? Okay. Remember that um, this area times height, if this height is S, right, if that's S right there, then I ask you to accept this as the same thing, right? So this is just a volume, this thing, area, the area of that times how far it moves, right, is the change in volume of the thing, right? Pressure is change in volume, right? So this is, this is the formula, right, is that work, and write this down. Okay, that work is pressure times change in volume. W is the work done by the gas. P is the pressure of the gas. Delta V is the volume, change in volume of the gas. Now, if delta V is positive, positive means that the piston moves out. That's positive delta V, right? And then, of course, if we, if we move it down, right, moving down is negative delta V. If it gets smaller, that's simple, right? Okay. Another way to, to look at these problems, here, let me just do an example of this. Okay, so uh, let's see. We work done by an isobaric. Okay, isobaric, iso means same, right? And baric means pressure. How do we see iso? How do we, what's another root for that? I'm not thinking of it, right? But barometer, right? Okay, uh, barometers measure pressure, right? So those are our roots of our thing here. So the pressure stays constant, 500 pascals, and we go from uh, 0.85 to 0.52. Okay, so my change in volume, okay, is uh, 0.52 minus 0.85. It's always final minus initial, so it's a negative change in volume, right? Okay. So uh, 0.52 minus 0.85, negative 0.33. cubic meters, right? And then work is pressure times change in volume. So it's 500 pascals. So that's newtons per uh, square meter, right? Times negative uh, 0.33 cubic meters, right? So times 500. And then I get uh, that it's negative 165. And the units are well, meters squared gets rid of all but one of those meters, right? And you end up with Newton meters, which are joules, right? So that's a very cool thing, okay? So that's an example, one type of example problem, right? Now, if it's if the pressure doesn't stay the same, then we have to use calculus. So we're always going to do problems that, that you know, are where the pressure stays the same. Um, okay, so, and then the other thing, the other way to think about these things is to think about pressure volume diagrams. This is pressure this way. Okay, this is volume this way, right? So the piston moving out is like that, okay? And the piston moving in is like that. That's an amazing straight line, right? So this is piston moves out, right? Piston moves in, okay? Um, and that's because here's the volume, right? The volume is increasing here. So and the only way to do that is to have the piston move out and then here the volume is decreasing. So the piston is moving in, 
the pistion, apparently, is how you spell it, right? Okay, um, then we can also talk about pressure increasing, right? Okay, so somehow the pressure increases. Okay, and if you look at this process here, if, if the pressure is going up like that, right? Uh, the question might be, how does the pressure go up? and the volume doesn't change. Well, the other thing that's going on here is that the temperature must be increasing, right? So heat must be flowing in. Remember, there's a third thing, right? So if the pressure is increasing on in this process and the volume doesn't change, then the, the temperature, this must be hot, right? This end must be cooler, right? Okay, so, so that's what's going on there. And then of course we could look at uh, another one here where the, um, the pressure decreases, right? Okay, because this is our pressure axis, right? Yeah, well, if the pressure is decreasing, if it drops and we don't change the volume, then it must be that the temperature is changing. And again, it goes from hot, right, to cold. Okay, now let's look at this guy here. This is sort of interesting, right? Uh, uh, so so heat, heat flows in, right? Q is positive, right? Here, Q is negative. Look at this guy, though. This is sort of an interesting one, right? If the piston moves in, Normally, when you decrease the volume, shouldn't the pressure increase? But it doesn't increase. So the only way to do this, to make the piston move in and not have the pressure increase, is to make this end cold and this end hot, right? Okay, so if you go from hot to cold, if you're moving the piston in and the, and the, the pressure doesn't rise, then this heat must be flowing out of this thing, right? And then if you look at this, Okay, if the piston moves out, well, normally when you give it more volume, shouldn't, shouldn't the pressure drop? But it doesn't drop, right? You can see that line's perfectly straight. How do I do that? Okay, uh, I'm holding the shift key is what I do. Anyway, how do you, how do you make the pressure, uh, how do you make the volume more but not have the pressure drop? Well, again, this end here has to be hot, right? And this end here has to be cold. Okay, so that's the other thing going on. So, so in order to do that, of course, you have to have a heat that flows in for this thing. And we'll talk about that more in class. This is a very confusing thing, okay? For now, though, all we have to really do is solve problems like this, okay? How much work is done by the process A, B? Well, work is pressure times change in volume, right? So the pressure is, let's see, this is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this must be... 400. This is like uh, for practice for the ACT, right? You're going to take the ACT this year if you're a junior. Under, and they're going to give you things like this. Probably not just like this, but a lot of graph reading, right? So the pressure is 300 and it stays constant, right? And that's newtons per square meter. And then the change in volume is from 0.2 to 0.7. So that's uh, change in V is positive 0.5 cubic meters. And sure enough, 300 times 0.5 is 150 joules, right? Yay! Yay! The world is happy. <laughs>